you know, I'll tell uh, who the morning people are and who the morning people are not. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you for joining us online. Thank you for being here uh, early on a Wednesday morning. I know uh, it is, uh, in, in the Western world, it would be a sacrifice to be here, right? You know what I mean? Not, not in other parts of the world. Uh, but we do live in the West, and uh, it is a sacrifice, and so appreciate uh, our worship team uh, being here this morning, and uh, uh, all of them obviously have jobs to go to, and to be here like this is amazing, so we really appreciate uh, them for sure. Um, and I'm grateful to God for all of you guys being here this morning early. Man, miracles never cease to amaze me. And, uh, uh, and it's so funny. I did not know my daughter Kirby was going to be here this morning. But uh, yesterday, I, on Tuesdays I study, right? Tuesdays is my study day. I lock myself in a way. Uh, I try, uh, sometimes I'll go to 2.30, 3 o'clock without, uh, boy, miracles do exist. Uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, sometimes you don't... Uh, I, I don't, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, I'll eat lunch. I'm like, why am I hungry? Well, I haven't eaten, you know what I mean? Because I'm so trying to, you know, study. And so yesterday, uh, I'm studying, and um, my, my door creaks open, right? And grandkids run into my room, get on top of uh, uh, my bed, start jumping like crazy, uh, start making noise, start, you know, can I play on your game? Can I have an iPad? Can I have this? And, you know, just, you know, interrupted me, you know, like crazy. And uh, so I stopped, you know, obviously, you know, my grandbabies, you know, I stopped. I played with her a little bit. I said, hey, guys, you know, you got his work at it. And so they left. Five minutes later, they were in my door again, you know, banging and jumping and all that kind of stuff, asking me stuff. Uh, can I have a plum? Can I do the, you know, whatever, you know, yes, of course you can, blah, blah, blah. And so... Uh, I know that this, you know, I love my grandkids, but after about um, seven or eight interruptions, uh, I went and locked the door, okay? And, uh, and they were hanging on that door. I don't mean like just like a little thing. I thought it was, I said, is this an adult? Who is it, right? It's Gatlin. Bang. I mean, just banging on that door like crazy. And I thought about what I was talking about today because obviously I've had this prepared for a while. Uh, and uh, that is uh, Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then approach God's throne with grace and boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. My grandchildren yesterday didn't care I was studying, didn't care that I was uh, working didn't care about anything like that. All they did is want to have access to me, right? They were screaming, hollering, knocking, jumping, everything they could. Uh, they had the audacity and the boldness to ask me for a plum, while because Gatlin's favorite fruit is plum like mine. And so the audacity to ask me for something when I'm already busy, right? Uh, but yet they had access right? And uh, God will never lock the door like I did yesterday, okay? But uh, anyway, you know, the illustration, you know, <clears throat> fell off there for a minute, all right? Now, let's what he says. Let us then approach God's throne with grace and boldness. I get to approach God's throne with grace because it's unmerited favor, right? I don't, I don't have access to God's throne based on who I am, but I have access to God's throne based on whose I belong to, right? Amen. And because of that grace in my life. And then he says boldly. The Greek word there is parousia. It's the word that means confidence, right? It means outspokenness. It means frankness. Mm -hmm. So watch this. I'm to approach God with confidence, mm -hmm. with outspokenness, mm -hmm. and with frankness okay now think about that now when you think about who God is and then you ask yourself how in the world could I approach God like that right how can I approach a holy God the creator of the universe with frankness right with with boldness with with confidence the same way my grandchildren did yesterday right 
with that boldness, that frank, because of relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. So that relationship allows me to come with boldness, right? And so I come because of relationship. I, I become, I, I come to God because of the position that I have in Christ. But I also come based on the principles of the Word of God, right? For instance, 1 John 1, 9. If I confess my sin, he's faithful just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 7. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. So I, my, my position, I'm in Christ, but I'm also because of the blood of Christ has cleansed me positionally, but also practically on a daily basis, right? So I come, I come boldly. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. That's a principle of the Word of God, right? And so that's why I've got to confess, right? If you were with me on Monday, I talked about my own personal, you know, how I do it. Uh, you know, that part of confessing the sin, right? 1 John uh, is all about that. 1 Peter chapter 3 teaches that if a husband and wife are having conflict, right? What it says? That your prayers are hindered. 1 Peter chapter 3. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. The Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity has separated you from God that he cannot hear you. And so positionally I'm in Christ. There's no doubt about it. That blood. But if I'm walking in sin and walking in iniquity, my fellowship is broken with God. And guess what? The power of God that I'm longing to see on my life and the life of my church is hindered because of, of my sin. You remember James chapter 4, verse number 4? He says, it's bold language. He says, you adulterers, and a, you know, you're committing spiritual adultery is what he says in James chapter 4, right? And then listen to what it says. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world can't be a friend of God, right? In, in the context of, 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 of adultery, not physical adultery, spiritual adultery. Uh, some folks are whoring around on God. Okay? You can't live in sin and ask for the favor of God at the same time, or at least expect it. Mm -hmm. That was that strong. Was you missed that, right? To live in sin and expect the favor of God is not going to happen. The success of our prayers begins based on our spiritual condition of our prayers. Right? So when I'm confessed up, when I, when, I, when I know that I'm cleansed, when I know that I've got this position that I can enter into the throne of God with boldness and confidence, it's also because of my position, but it's also because of the principles that I've already walked through. You understand what I'm saying? Right? I've already walked through being cleansed. I've already, you know, all, all the scriptures I just gave you, I'm already in that process. I'm already in Romans 8 1. Hey, there's no more condemnation for me. I can approach him because of that amazing grace. My standing is in grace, Romans 5 2, right? I, I get to approach because my standing is in grace. My position is in grace. And so, why today? Do our prayers seem to be ineffective when we have, or why don't we have the confidence to go with God with boldness and frankness? Could it be because we know some stuff is in there that we're not let it know about, right? Now, he already knows about it, right? But we haven't let it know about it. God, this is what's going on with me. God, this is what's happening with me. Therefore, I come boldness. That's why when I pray, I do con I, I confess first. I know some people worship first and bless God first. I feel awkward in my own heart to do it that way, personally, right? Uh, you know, God, I'm sorry, and I lost my temper. I'm an idiot. God, please forgive me. God, and then I, I name the sin, right? Because I want to be, I'm, I'm, I already have my position, but practically, I want to have that. And so, uh, what would happen today if we approach God with boldness and confidence, with frankness, because of our relationship, because of our position, and because, practically, I know I'm cleansed.
How do I know it right now? Because I dealt with it this morning. <laughs> or he dealt with me. I, I've already walked through that process, right? And so because of that, ah, that confidence that hears me in my time of need. We've got some times of, of need. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, I got a text uh, from Ralph Canada. Ralph Canada is one of our missionaries that we support uh, and have been up 10 years, over a decade at least, but maybe 12 years. Uh, he said that, you know, we have some folks in Afghanistan, and he said that right now the Taliban is going from house to house, taking girls that are 12, 13, 14, 15 years of age, taking them to be sex slaves for the soldiers. Uh, he said it's uh, un unbelievable what's happening. He said the underground church has already been getting word consistently. We know who you are. We know where you are. And this is your last and final days. And uh, so he was like, you know, I mean, we have people in Afghanistan right now, people that we, this church, have supported there. All right. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty heavy stuff right now going on there. So let's, let's pray. Let's, let's go with boldness. And then anything that's happening in your life, let's go with boldness to the throne of God. Father, in Jesus' name, we do come to you with boldness with confidence, knowing that we're going to uh, receive grace and mercy, knowing that we can be outspoken, uh, not uh, irreverent by any means, but outspoken with frankness and even a little audaciousness, God, to come to you. We know that you desperately uh, want to answer our prayers, probably more desperate than we want to give them to you. So, Father, in Jesus' name, move on everyone's life individually, the life of our church, and God, all that's happening in Afghanistan right now. Oh, God, we need your grace and mercy and your divine intervention, so please do so that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hey, for those of you watching online, go pray somewhere, and for those of you in here, if you need to slip out, you can certainly do so, uh, or uh, just get on your knees, stand around, pray, do whatever you want to do. Thank you all so much for being here. I love seeing new faces this morning. And uh, it fires me up to see teenagers uh, this early in the morning. Uh, it really does. So thank y'all for being here. God bless.